about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be, life with no distractions We'll get away, this is what we waited for Good evening everyone, it's Jim here at Tutor to You. Warm welcome to our latest uh, AQA A-Level Sociology live revision stream. And it's continuing our look, our dive into crime and deviance with a focus on Marxism tonight. And I'm joined as always by our two regular gurus of sociology. Gurus, is that the right word? I'm happy Yes, with it is. Gurus. It's Craig in the middle <laughs> and Duncan on the right. Oh, a very was... warm welcome to you. What's that, Craig? <clears throat> I was saying, are you talking about us? <laughs> Certainly, <laughs> Sociology am. gurus. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, goats, gurus. I'm not sure what the term is, but maybe by the end of the <laughs> session, we will come back to that. Anyway, most importantly, a very warm welcome to all, everyone, all the students who are joining us live. I can see from the, the dial down here, the live display, that we've got lots of students joining us for the live session. So you get a chance to have a go at some of the activities that uh, Craig and Duncan have put together by answering in the live chat window. Please do. Don't be shy. Have a go. But we know from the statistics that many, many students catch up on these sessions using the video and the replay on YouTube and Tutor to You. So if you're watching on Catch Up, uh, can't use the live chat, but please do get involved by uh, having a go at the activities. Maybe pausing the video to give yourself a little bit more time. And at the end of the session, I'll give you the link where you can download all the slides from today's session. So don't worry about writing everything down just enjoy the session are we good to go craig Duncan, what do you think who wants to introduce it tonight absolutely well i can say a word or two if we like so we are going to be looking at marxism and crime and deviance so following on we've looked at functionalism so we're going through our um perspectives as we do in other topics as well um and like we did with functionalism last uh two weeks ago we um going to start with a little bit about what you already know about Marxism, because of course you've looked at Marxism throughout year 12 um, in relation to year 12 topics. 
and you can make those links and it's you know you're not learning all new stuff so i think we're going to start with craig with a an activity thinking about what you already know about marxism before we even get onto the crime really we are thank you duncan um we're going to play a game of word association here what i've done is i've written a, um, a, the term marxism on the screen and what you will have is you'll have 60 seconds to come up with terms and concepts and theories that you would associate with marxism that fit in each of the letters so m you would think of a concept that might associate with marxism for beginning with the letter m and um, a r x i s m and so on and so forth and um, extra points if you get something that begins with x because that's um, <laughs> a pretty difficult one pretty difficult one that we've thrown in today for marxism um, what you need to do is you need to um just uh, write the letter or write the, the key terms like in the chat box on the right hand side of your screen so if we could have um 30 se uh, sorry 60 seconds on the clock please and off we go mm -hmm. so yeah x is very difficult mm -hmm. i think uh, craig has cheated with x when we get there so. well you know <laughs> You can think of loads for these. I mean, lots of names, mm. lots of concepts. So do not be shy. You don't have to do them all at once. You don't have to do them in any particular order. Just fire them out. No, just, yep. Got the old Marks and Spencer gag there, to say. <laughs> Where also soldiers go shopping. Oh, got an S. So come in with a okay, private Okay, so we've got a breast, um, but you don't have to. Yeah, we've got a. No, no, this is just general Marxism. So we could have M for anything, you know, M for a Marxist term, uh, A R X I S M. Uh, so we've had some good responses there. Let's see what I kind of came up with. And, and as you will see, Duncan is right that I did cheat for the letter X. Um, really struggling for sort of like something with X. Uh, maybe you could have kind of gone with something like xenophobia, yeah. um, you know, but possibly because obviously Marxists tend to be internationalists, and, and but but that's very that's very kind of thing. Right, with an exploitation, yeah. Um, M for Marx. Well, you know that, that one was pretty obvious. You could have gone for Marcuse. Um, lots of other terms you could have gone with there. Materialism. Uh, um, yeah. The... Sorry. Materialism. materialism. Yeah, materialism. Yeah. Um, a for alienation, done. which uh, uh, I think a couple of people have picked up in the chat box there. A, a for alienation, really good concept. Could have R had for ruling class. Althusser, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you could have had Althusser. Um, R for ruling class, uh, reproduction of class inequality, we could have had as well. That would have been a good, nice one. Uh, of course, I've gone for exploitation. Um, obviously, taking, um, obviously taking my influence from last week's UB culture um, when we did the subculture activity. Absolutely. I for the ideological been, um, state apparatus. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, ideology could yeah. have been fun as well. Um, I was just thinking xylophone. Xylophone, that well known. Uh, xylophone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it, not many people knew that Marx, along with being an economist and historian, was an accomplished <laughs> xylophone player. Yeah, I get you. I see where you're going with that. Um, yeah. We've had selective law enforcement. I, I said superstructure, and I think I, I've picked superstructure here because I think that's that's quite an important concept um, that links in with crime as well, um, particularly when we look at the idea of social control. Could have used social control there too. Um, and sort of like the way in which the ruling class used the superculture as a superstructure to control um, uh, the masses. And then M, we went for means of production. Um, of course, sort of like obviously um, very big Marxist concept there. So why do we do activities like this? If we could just go to our next slide, please, Jim. Thank you. Um, when you're revising and when you come to start revising, it's always really useful to review some of the key terms and ideas and sociologists that you associate with a certain approach. So when we did our, our, our um, live stream on functionalism, we did a very similar activity where we started to look at some of the key terms that linked in with functionalism. We do the same with Marxism. And one of the reasons being is that because there are many synoptic links across the course, 
Many of these key themes of Marxism reappear again when we look at uh, when we look at crime and deviance. So ideas like exploitation, we can link in with things like criminogenic capitalism. Um, the ideas of the superstructure, of course, that links into sort of like some of Althusser's ideas as well as kind of traditional Marxist ideas, but also sort of like, you know, the idea, the, the way in which sort of like certain institutions look to control um, people. Because while we're talking about crime and deviance, we are also talking about social control as well. Okay, so these concepts are really useful and you can look at them again and again. Okay, we've got a... There's fish herring. swimming across the screen. There were some fish, right? it's, it's because we've uh, done this in association with uh, Disney Pixar um, and we've <laughs> got this little activity for you now. Um, gonna, it's, it's quite a tricky activity, this I always think, because you've got two things to do, essentially. You've got to try and work out what, um, what the link is, what links the, uh, the, the concepts or the ideas on the screen and also um work out which one's the odd one out so you got it's sort of a two two stage activity and we're thinking here about mm -hmm. some of the sort of key um marxist um criminal criminological studies really um crime studies into crime and deviance some of the ones you might have covered um in class or certainly be able to find in your textbooks or other um areas so if any of this isn't familiar you'd be able to root it out and find it shall we have a Little look at the first one. Just got a couple of these. Okay, so we've got four fish, A, B, C, and D. Got to try and work out which one's the odd one out. And in doing that, you need to work out, um, obviously, what what links the other three. So we've got property law does not only protect the rich. We've got there was crime in the Soviet Union. We've got health and safety laws mostly benefit the bosses. And we've got there are laws that protect workers' rights. Yeah, there aren't. None of them are red at the moment. You're quite right, Nazarin. Um, we're just we're not actually trying to find the red one. We're trying to find the odd the odd one out. So if we have a look, which three of these are? What do we think is linking three of them, and uh, and which one do you think is different? What do we reckon? Think of anything that sort of links them. I'm going to give you a sort of first clue, which is um, that this is in relation to kind of um, traditional Marxist um, studies about crime and deviance and ideas about crime and deviance. So Angela's suggesting it could be B, there was crime in the Soviet Union. Um, I think we need a reason why. Um, oh, Minecraft's asking, are we finding, the, finding the odd, the odd one, one out? In the odd one out but to do that you kind of have to find the link between the other three don't you but mm -hmm. yes yeah, so if you find the odd one out but it would be quite useful to to know what what your thinking is behind that choice why mm -hmm. you think it's the odd one out so we've had a suggestion for b um anyone want to suggest anything else before we have a look at the answers or give a reason for your suggestion um shall we have a look at this one and then let's see how we do with the with the next one okay so it was c well we had another suggestion there about um no it should have been d <laughs> minecraft has said d and minecraft is right it should have been d i'm very confused why it's come up as c and i wrote it so it's my fault I do apologize um it let me just read through them just to make sure I'm agreeing with Minecraft. No, so, I am. D, c, c would be right, I think. If, so if the link, if you if you show the link, you, you might sort of like see that C so should the, be the right. Criticism, they're all criticisms of traditional Marxist criminology. Um, property mm -hmm. law does not only protect the rich. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, I had a moment then, sorry. I was distracted by Minecraft, but no, no, I'm reading them properly now. No, I was right when I wrote it. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, yes, C is C is correct. <laughs> so, so if we look, try. Sorry, I'll explain it because I don't want to confuse people there. So, if I work, if I explain the link between A, B, and, and D, so they're all criticisms of traditional Marxist criminology. So, property law does not only protect the rich. Um, so, Marxists, traditional Marxists, would say, you know, that the law focuses on property law, and that's primarily defending the, the bourgeoisie and in the interest of the bourgeoisie. But obviously in contemporary society, 
property laws also protect well kind of everyone who might have a house or a tv or a or a phone or something which they don't want to have stolen you know most people have some property of some description um there was crime in the soviet union so some traditional marxist um criminology suggests that crime is caused by capitalism that there's a link between capitalism and crime um and then there are also um the idea that there are laws that protect workers' rights. So not all laws are in the interests of the bourgeoisie. Some are also in the interests of the proletariat. But the C is the odd one out because um, that is a that is a traditional criminal uh, Marxist idea that even, even health and safety laws primarily benefit the bosses rather than the workers. Okay, sorry about that slight muddle. Let's, let's look at the next one. Okay, so we've got the war on drugs. We've got selective law enforcement, which someone came as, gave us a brilliant answer in the first activity in Marxism. We've got Seattle and we've got a crime syndicate. This is quite a tricky one, but if you've been looking at some Marxist studies on crime and deviance, you might get it. You might recognise certain aspects of this and think that some of them link and perhaps some of them don't. If you just a moment to have a think about this obviously if you're watching on catch up you can pause it and have a bit of a longer think maybe look through your notes and cheat <laughs> um okay i'm thinking about particular studies should we have a look let's have a look which one is the red herring the odd one out it is the war on drugs the others are all features of shambliss's classic study um, into uh, crime where he looked he studied Seattle he looked at the nature of selective law enforcement in Seattle and how there was effectively a crime syndicate made up of um, you know the bosses of big companies and politicians and um, as well as um, organized crime um, and they weren't the people who tended to get um, arrested which tended to be sort of smaller petty crimes the war on drugs relates more to um, Graham's study um, which looked at um, uh, drug laws in, in the US as well. Both uh, sort of classic Marxist studies from the 70s, but um, slightly different focus. Okay, but well done. Some good ideas there. I'll hand back to Craig. Okay, thank you, Duncan. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at um, an exam type question. And uh, last week we looked at the 10 markers. This week we're going to look at some of the short answer questions um, that are on paper on paper three, question one and question two. Now the short answer questions on the crime and deviance paper can be broken down into smaller sections, into individual marks. When you write a response to this type of question, which is usually outlined and briefly explained, you're being awarded one mark for identifying a reason or a way and a second mark for explaining how this occurs. Now, these are a little bit tricky because what you have to do is you, when you're explaining the reason, you have to make sure that you focus on any, some of the key terms in the question. And in this one, the key term that we're really focused on is capitalism. And the question itself is, if we could just go to the next slide, please, Jim. Um, oh, actually, the next slide. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is we're going to do an activity where I've written some, I've written a question which isn't appearing for some reason, uh, but it is generally out, outline and explain two ways in which capitalism generates crime. OK, now what I've done on here, rather than giving you a perfect response, I've given you a response that needs to be developed. OK, so we can have a look at this and we can say, right, one way capitalism generates crime is through promoting false needs. You would probably get one mark for that. Does the second sentence explain how capitalism creates this or how how capitalism creates these false needs does it do enough to get a second mark if we look at the second um, statement a second way in which capitalism leads to crime is through promoting competition business leaders break the law in order to make profits now you would get one mark for the first line but you probably wouldn't get a, another mark for the second what i'm going to ask you to do is what might we add in how might we expand this two second lines to get a, a better response? OK, so we've said here capitalism makes people feel deprived and so they turn to crime. Is that enough of an explanation? The answer is no. We need to be able to develop that a little bit further. And then and on the second one, business leaders break the law in order to make profits. 
Okay, so what we might need to do is, how do business leaders break the law? Why do they break the law? What is it about capitalism that makes them break the law? Okay, so what we've done is we've highlighted two parts of the question there. Uh, capitalism makes people feel deprived and business leaders break the law in order to make profits. What I would like you to do is to develop those points a little bit further. How, why do business um, leaders, for example, why do business leaders break the law? You know, what motivates them? What part of capitalism motivates them to break the law? And in the first one, how does capitalism make people feel deprived? Okay, so if you just type in um, in the in the chat box on the right hand side, a way in which you think capitalism makes people feel deprived, and a way in which business leaders, um, or a reason why business leaders may break the law, the law, other than making profits. I mean, just a quick word on these because these are like the, the four markers. They don't need loads, so it's not mm. that we're looking for. We're not they looking don't. For like a paragraph here. You know, two sentences could well be enough, but it's just that the this second mm -hmm. sentence in this instance isn't quite doing enough. So, could you? you it's know, not. It's it up what it's doing is it's making a statement rather than actually explaining. Yeah. So, what it's saying is capitalism makes people feel deprived. Now. If if one of my students had written that, I would be asking them, well, how does it make people feel deprived? What mechanism, you know, what? how do, how does it work? How do people feel deprived because of capitalism? Um, with the second one, business leaders break the law. Well, why do they break the law? What motivates them to break the law? What is it about capitalism that motivates them um, to break the law? So we have a look at those. It is a bit of a tough task to do, um, but we're trying to sort of like show you, you're trying to demonstrate to you sort of like, how um how really to get full marks on sort of like these kind of two and four mark questions so we've got a good response here the need to generate profits for shareholders nice um, we can link to the media the pluralist view managers have to maximize profits uh, certainly the idea that they have to maximize profits to generate profits for shareholders i think that's a really nice response if you added that into that and um, that there were business leaders need to generate profits to, to appease shareholders that is going to go to two marks. We'll see that in a minute. Um, any on the first one? Because I think it's interesting because the, the point there is about capitalism making people feel deprived. Obviously, Marxists also think mm -hmm. that cap capitalism make, actually makes people deprived. It makes people poor. It, it exploits people. But this mm. is a it is making a different point. It makes them feel deprived. So what is it? So we've had a suggestion there about consumerism. That's definitely consumerism. to it. Mm -hmm. mm, that's certainly part of it, I would say. Also, you know, if we think about the other side of consumerism, sort of like, you know, we, we can see that people, you know, this idea of consumerism, but what if you can't afford those consumer goods? Could that have an impact? I think someone right at the it, first question mentioned marketing, didn't they? And uh, it's, they could mm, make, make a link there to how, you know, where do these certainly would think to it? Hmm. How does capitalism generate false needs? Should we have a look? There we go. That's a nice response. Let's go. Ooh. Let's have a look. What I've done is here is sort of like, I've put in, I've amended these to sort of like show what you would get for two marks. As you can see, it's not that much. We're not looking for big paragraphs. We're looking for basically two well-developed sentences. And um, what I've amended, um, the first one where it sort of like says capitalism makes people, people feel deprived. I've said by promoting goods and services while simultaneously denying people the means to achieve these goods. You may not have needed that. I put that in there. Um, it leads to people feeling relative deprivation. I can see Minecraft had put people can't afford yeah. the false needs that may turn yeah. to crown to be able to satisfy them. I think that would get an extra yeah, mark as well. It, the idea that capitalism promotes these false, need, false needs. And then the second one, um, almost word for word, what Minecraft had, had, had put in earlier on there, uh, the need to generate increasing profits to keep shareholders happy. As a result, they may look to breach rules and regulations committing corporate crime in order to make profits. What we've done is we've really, we've taken uh, those two kind of what would, would be one out of two or well, two out of four marks, and we've taken them all the way to four marks there. Okay, and that's what you need to do on these short answer questions. You need to put one sentence that identifies a way in which um, something happens. And with the second sentence, you need to develop that point, not just state how it does it, but develop it. Explain briefly how it works. 
or someone's got a okay, question. Okay, so I have somebody there. a question. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them yeah, in, yeah. into the chat box and we'll get we'll get back to them so they went at a right pause. Yeah, so I'll start the next activity, but if you do, I'll keep an eye on the chat box for the questions. So that's fine. So we've got a bit of a debate now. This is more like the sort of thing you might get in a in a longer essay question, you know, evaluate the view or evaluate the usefulness of Marxist ideas mm -hmm. for understanding crime um, in society today. Um, so we shall have a look at that. So to start with, I want you to think of arguments in favour of that or evidence in favour of that anything that you would say to basically support the view that Marxist ideas are useful um, for understanding crime in contemporary society. Um, what could you, what some strengths of Marxist ideas? Um, okay. Got a couple of questions in the chat window i'm just trying to work out quite what they mean crime, so, I'll, I'll i'm thinking what, what i'll say about the crime question there crime is not as important for sociology a level as it is for aqa um i, I don't know different boards obviously we, we we're doing aqa boards the crime questions are worth 50 marks out of a total of 240 um so that's you know in terms of percentages it's what just under 20 just about 20 just under 20 percent is that right no uh, yeah just yeah around about 20 percent just under 25 percent so they're worth the 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 worth uh, you know 50 out of out of the total 240 marks um i don't know about other boards no so if you do head. ocr or something like that we're not um, we, we'd need to check that so but you obviously you can have a look on the on the website um but yes mm. if you're thinking of i i'm not doing crime at the moment don't worry about it too much if you um you might be doing it later or you might be doing different use doing a different mm. board and have yeah um oh yeah level international okay right okay okay um yeah so it may be a section of the paper it depends on how how many how many marks that paper is worth mm -hmm. um it depends on how many uh, and how many how many marks are on that are, are on that question yeah so in Sorry, terms how many of marks AQA, are on those questions yeah. in terms of the aqa level the crime and deviance paper does also have um theory of methods in it so it's not just crime and deviance mm -hmm. on that paper but it does form the bulk of it um okay there's another question in the chat window but i think we'd need to write a write an essay or something on that i'm not sure we'd be able to, we can answer it briefly in the uh in in, in the the live stream has anyone got any suggestions for arguments in favor of um the idea that marxist ideas are useful for understanding contemporary society um what have we got some we've got any marxists in the chat window want to defend marxism not there normally have a few okay some suggestions here so um there are examples you can come up with examples of selective law enforcement examples of where the law is applied either only applied to working class people or is applied more harshly um or yeah more yeah that better off people richer people are given more lenient sentences it has to be said you can also find some examples of the opposite if you want to so you can uh, you can find mm -hmm. arguments on both sides of that um but there are definitely things that you could you could look at there um and i think it's you know it's pretty clear even just looking at statistics that deprivation and inequality is a clear driver of criminal activity and, and marxists aren't the only people that say so there are other um sociological perspectives that would agree that um you know poverty uh, deprivation inequality um is a driving force behind crime they might not agree that that's caused by capitalism or that um you know that you know they might have different reasons for why inequality exists um okay there's um some things there let's have a think about the other side then we've got some criticisms some arguments to oppose the idea that Marxist ideas are useful for understanding contemporary crime might be that you think that things that is outdated, but maybe you give some reasons for that. But um, anything else that you might want to add on that question? So over predicts crime of the working class. Not all poor people commit mm -hmm. crime. That's true. Um, there's a there's a there's a sense of um, 
reductionism to it, isn't there, or determinism, mm -hmm. um, potentially. It's also, some people say that they over, and we haven't talked about this particularly today because we'll, we'll talk about class and crime another session, but some people say that they focus too much on white collar crime and middle class crime, that they kind of seem to see that as being much worse than <laughs> crime by people of other social classes and therefore focus on that too much. So you could make either argument there. Um, um, anything else that we could say sort of against the Marxist idea? There's loads of potential arguments you can make. A um, couple were on some of those earlier slides, actually. Crime is not unique to capitalist society. So this idea that capitalism is criminogenic, that capitalism causes crime, um, then Marxists have to explain why non-capitalist societies also have crime in them. Obviously, people like uh, functionalists have a good answer to that, that there's deviance in all, uh, all societies will have deviance, but fun Marxists need to come up with an explanation for why, you know, there was crime in the Soviet Union, there's crime in Cuba. Um, they tend to either say it's because they're not fully communist societies, <laughs> um, you know, there, there, there tends to always be a, an explanation for it, but that is a, a potential problem. And then some Marxist ideas, particularly some of the neo-Marxist ideas actually, have occasionally been accused of being almost like conspiracy theories. So the idea that things might happen in order to defend capitalism and prevent revolution sort of suggests that people are kind of plotting and thinking about this. So kind of Stuart Hall's idea that there was a kind of moral panic about um, mugging in the 70s um, in order to draw attention away from the sort of crisis of capitalism that was occurring at the time um, does suggest that people are sort of seem to suggest that people's bourgeoisie have sort of sat down and planned this like kind of um you know dr evil in austin <laughs> powers or something that they're sort of sitting there saying oh, <laughs> here's how we'll uh, defend capitalism today and that doesn't seem you know particularly um convincing um no oh, it depends on your viewpoint really <laughs> <laughs> it depends Potentially. on your viewpoint Seems yeah, it might well be that that's the outcome, but to, but but to imagine that there's mm. sort of there's like a secret meeting somewhere where they plan it all feels a little like we're sort of drifting into drifting into conspiracy theory. Okay, mm. but well done. I'm going to hand back to Craig now for a fun fun final activity. Yeah. Just to finish off today, we're going to do a new activity that we started. Well, I say new activity, an activity we tried out, um, I think, last week or the week before uh, called Word Smash. Uh, what you have to do is you, you will get a picture clue and you will get a question. Now, the picture clue is something very generic. You, you don't really need to know too much about sociology to get the picture clue. Um, and the other clue is uh, the question is about sociology. And what will happen is that we smash those two together. So as the example says here, there's a picture of an elephant on one side and the southernmost continent in the world, which is home to the South Pole, we have Elephantarctica. So we have elephant plus Antarctica equals Elephantarctica. Okay, mine clearly are not going to be as sophisticated as Elephantarctica, but <laughs> let's go with this one. So what we have on, on one side is we have a picture and on the right hand side we have the question, crime committed by the middle class. To give the answer, what you have to do is you have to put the picture and the crime and push them together and sort of like come up with a lovely phrase. So what do we have here? We have a character. And we have a question. So we have to add the character to the answer to the question to come up with one. So if we somebody's come up with the, the, the correct answer to the question, but who do we have on the left hand side? I think, I think people have probably got it, haven't they? If once you've got this, mm -hmm. you'll definitely have an idea of what we're doing. Who is the character? Who's the character on the left hand side? So we've got the... Snow White. Snow um, White got... and crime committed by the middle classes. Snow White collar crime. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> it was easier. It was e it was easier than Elephant Antarctica, surely. Yeah, so Snow White I Collar guess. Crime we've got there. Um, as I said, this is just for fun. Please don't write Snow White <laughs> Collar Crime in the exam. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have a picture. 
um, of a gentleman, uh, and how the ruling class make laws in their own interests. So, what kind of concept, um, what concept um, are we talking about on the right hand side, and who is the gentleman on the left? Push them together and come up with a response. Does, I, does do people recognise the photo? They should do. He's in Captain yeah. Marvel. Maybe John Rogg and Captain Marvel. It's, it's been lots of other sort of things, but I'm thinking of very contemporary things. You know, things that have been. Out in, oh, he's also in the new, uh, in the Harry Potter films, in the new ones. Oh, the, in the new ones, the yeah, the the um, Fantastic oh, Beasts, ones. magical creatures. Yeah, Fantastic Beasts. That's it. He's he plays Dumbledore. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Andy was in uh, Sherlock Holmes. The, the movie ones i think he was he was he was, he was uh watson hmm? yeah. to robert downey jr's okay what's his name yeah. no nope. no one knows him famous, okay. it would really he help famous it well would really help it would help if you knew the, the, the concept on the right hand side let's look at the concept on the right hand side how the ruling class make laws in their own interests what concept is that henry cavill no, <laughs> no it's not henry cavill that would make Although I'm going to try and work Henry different. Cavill into one, I think. Yeah. Um, Let's have a go. Oh, so, so how does the ruling class make laws in their own interests? It's a very, it's, it is. So we've got Jude Law. Yeah. And the concept was law creation. So we now have Jude Law creation. Yeah. We've okay. got one more of these. Silence is, the silence is deafening really, isn't it? The tumbleweed's coming through. Hopefully we'll get this one. Uh, on the left-hand side, very, 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 I mean, obviously this is an older picture, but this is happening. Um, it's been very much in the news at the moment. And then on the right-hand side, this is a term that you should know, particularly when you're looking at neo-Marxist ideas. So what's happening on the left-hand side that is also happening today uh, well, it certainly has happened, continues to happen at the moment. We have a petrol station, and you know, it says pumps closed. Pumps closed. Hmm. What are we talking about in the news? Or do you know the answer to that? Do you know the sociology? Or do you know the answer to the other one? Yeah. Again, you mentioned Stuart Hall before, and it's not like this I concept did. is very much linked to into the ideas of Hall. I, and I used a related. That what we did is we blamed, uh, mm, right. not the same one. No, it's not the Vietnam true. War, no. Although the Vietnam, <laughs> Vietnam War could be seen as a threat to social order, however, yes. oh, no, sorry, all um, oh, right, that, this sorry, that's, not that's, the, that's not the answer. I thought that was the picture. I was trying yeah. to work out. I was trying to work out how the picture might no, be no. Vietnam War. Sorry, yes, Ooh, Vietnam War was very much. I a, see. A, yes, I can see how that could have been. The Vietnam. I would. I would actually argue the Vietnam War is part of the answer. Yeah. Um, you know, it's well, one yeah, of the many absolutely. things that happened in the 1970s that caused this to happen, uh, or caused sociological thinkers. Yeah. On the left-hand side, we have the fuel crisis. Obviously, it's been in the news a lot in the UK at the moment, lack of tanker drivers, and therefore we're not um, getting fuel to fuel stations, and the crisis of hegemony. So we get the fuel crisis of hegemony. <sighs> there you go. <laughs> and that's us. That's us. That's, that's the Dallas one for today. We need to come back and do some more word smashes next week. Uh, yeah. Your challenge, Craig <laughs> Duncan, is to make them as easy as possible. <laughs> Uh, make I, I thought that. So easier yeah. than tonight. Easier. Yeah. Easier. Yeah. Okay. Easier. But we can do it. We can, we can we can crack these words smashes along with all the other activities. It's fantastic stuff. <laughs> Half an hour on mm. marks and crime on a Wednesday night. Fantastic stuff. Uh, so well done for everyone who's joined us uh, live, and particularly for all the people who've uh, logged into the live chat and had to go at the questions. Not all of them easy, uh, and um, hopefully you found it useful. If you have. Give us the, give the session a thumbs up on YouTube, and uh, that'd be great because that will help YouTube suggest this session and all the others we've done. I think we've done about twenty five or thirty now this year for A Level Sociology. Mm -hmm. um, and if you go to tutortu.net forward slash live, you can catch up on this session, all the previous sessions, download all the powerpoints, but also see the sessions that are coming up next. It's a regular slot here on Wednesday at six thirty. Duncan, I can't remember what what next week is, but I know it'll be crime and deviance related. Can you remember? Media. Is it, oh, no, it's realism. Realism? Is it realism that or media? That sounds familiar. We'll, realism, we'll it must find be. Out. realism and crime. Sounds, realism sounds like a good option. Uh, notice there's a question yeah. there the about one before, whether we might do uh, 
religion or beliefs at some point. We will at some point. We get we're we're we're, we're rattling through crime at the moment. We will come to do some we, ones later. We have done a religion. We have done a religion re, um, live stream. So like if you go back on to choose yeah. to use. Um, sorry, yeah, a, a revision blast. Um, we did one um, back in May, May yeah, or April, April May time, yeah. of last year. But I'm sure we'll be doing some more live streams uh, beyond uh, beyond this term, particularly as we start to get into sort of the mock and uh, assessment and uh, the season of getting ready for exams. So look out for those. Best way to do subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you'll get an alert as soon as every session is scheduled for YouTube. Fantastic stuff, right? I'm going to ask uh, uh, Greg, uh, so Duncan, <laughs> Duncan and Craig. It's been a long day to uh, to sign off. Now we're going to. Uh, Come back again in seven days' time for our next session. This has been fun. We'll see you next time. See you later.